Good morning, Saints. This is Big D Cross, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, exposure, spirit, judgment, and the difference between the two. Um, God put this on my heart, so I'll go ahead and give you my best. Um, a lot of people seem to point a finger at somebody else, and they know Bible clearly states, you know, you have a plank in your own eye. Why, you know, look at somebody else's spec. So we got to understand how it works. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are trying to be judgmental. It's just uh, part of what the world teaches us. But what we need to do is learn that an exposure spirit is for you to pray. So if you are see something that maybe somebody doesn't else see, that's an exposure spirit. And that's God saying, I'm showing you this because I trust that you'll pray for this person and lead them back to me. Uh, Matthew 7, 1 says, do not judge or you too will be judged. And uh, Proverbs 21, and I, I, there's some really good scripture in Proverbs 21, 2 says, a person may think in their own ways are right, but the Lord's ways the heart. So, today we're going to get into that a little bit on um, judgment and exposure and really the difference because I think God is trying to show a lot of people things, but they're taking it the wrong way. Um, you know, we're out in this world where it builds us and it capulates you, it uh, synchronizes you, subliminals your mind and every thought pattern of the TV is a monitor to keep the brain pattern in structure. Uh, the fear designed on the news, the channels, um, and social media is designed also to keep you structured. See, you're in a you're in a box, and that box is of the world, and it keeps using, you know, familiar spirits, your weaknesses, uh, your breakdowns to attack and keep you in check. And that's why a lot of people say, "Now nah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I used to pray, I used that, but now nah, everything went, fell apart when I did, so I don't want a part of it. But wait a minute, <laughs> it's, it's going to fall apart worse. You know, God was trying to share with you how and expose things to you to deal with so that they wouldn't fall apart. That's the truth in it. So when we... We go back to Matthew 7, 3. Why do you want to look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? You have to look at, we all come short. We were born in sin. We come short. Okay, amen. But you got to have some point in which you stop. You have to have a point in which you say enough's enough or, you know, Father, I need through the Holy Spirit to teach me Wisdom, because mine is just not working. And sometimes you have to do that just to get back on track. Now, in Luke 6, 37, it says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you not will be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So it's kind of showing you, I need you to work on your own. But I expose things to others for you to pray. And that's why a lot of people get it twisted. Well, you know, they judge. Um, I see a lot happening on the Internet with the pastor. I'm not going to mention any names. Who's just judging other preachers and judging this. Instead, should be on his knees with the congregation praying and asking the Lord to change their hearts and souls. We do not need to be like the pharaohs uh, where we pray out loud and we have to be known about what we're doing. Um, we go quietly to God and we take it up in ownership of the Holy Spirit. More is going to get done that way. In Romans 14, 4, it says, Who are you to judge someone else's servant for their own master's servant stands or falls? And they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. And I look, I've seen a lot of people in a lot of places that fail. And God's still loving them. Even when people are pointing fingers at them. Great example is Jim Carrey. You know, Jim Carrey is a great example. Everybody called him a nut job. And 
it was LA Nation, and it was out there in Jump Street, and I just kept praying, Lord, please, you know, I remember he did the movie Bruce Almighty, you know, let him see the real you, let him see the real you, God. That's all I ask. Let him see the real you. And now he's worshiping and praising God every day. So that's the benefit of when you don't judge. You take the exposure spirit and you attack it in a soldier of God. Um, Isaiah, we've used a lot in the 5417. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you in the inheritance of the servants of the Lord and in their uh, vindication uh, from me, declares the Lord. Pretty much means what we talked about, working on our own selves um, every day, trying to better ourselves. If you don't like something about yourself, go to the Lord and say, I need to change this, help me. The Lord says, a poor man crieth out, and I heard him and delivered him from all his fears. James 4, 12 says, There is only one lawgiver and one judge, and the one who is able to save and destroy, but you, who are you, to judge your neighbor? So you kind of can see, there's a lot on judging, but yet that's what the world does on a consistency basis. Um, I see it in New Orleans when men are trying to reach people, um, that aren't walking straight paths of God instead of just asking them to pray for them and what they heard about and love them, you know, the point fingers. You're going straight to hell. You're going this, you're going that. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you just love this person? And then what we're called to do? Love one another as I loved you that all men we know you're my disciples. So who are we at a point of finger today? You know, who are we to judge? We're not. But at the same time, if you know something about that person and you don't help them see that other side, then you're really not loving them. That's true talk. Romans 2.12 says, For all sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. Um, and John 3.17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but... What? To save the world through him. And that's using us. We are called the sons of God. And by exposure, that's what he's doing. He's trusting in you that you receive spiritually how things should be administered. Not that we judge others and point fingers. Romans 2.12 says, uh, excuse me. Uh, Colossians two sixteen seventeen says, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, the new moon celebration of Sabbath day. These are shadow of things that were to come, and reality, however, is found in Christ. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people in this time um, change. And I don't mean uh, where they're the same person. They just changed. Now, can I point a finger? No. But can I pray for them? Yes. I can say, Lord, we need strong soldiers. We need those able to see exposing spirits and be able to help define what we need to do in the end of times. You know, that's clearly what he wants us to do. Um, Now, Romans 14.3 says, One who eats everything must not treat it with contempt, and the one who does not, and this is when God's given things to you, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. That's where he shows you things for you to pray about, for you to help people get higher, um, for you to be able to do what you need to do, that God can reach souls and hearts. Um, and that's why I see a lot of backbiting, fights, argument, uh, because the enemy's got that person gapped up where they actually got them in the weakness and they're going to either kill or destroy them. And that's what we come against today. That's what we fight for today. In 1 Corinthians, I'll show you how that works. 927, no, I 
strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not disqualify for the prize, be not disqualified for the prize. We have to monitor us. Am I being holy? Am I being soldier-minded? Am I allowing the wisdom of God and the Holy Spirit to speak through me? Or is it being consumed to me to human nature? Am I walking with the world today? Uh, Why does the gate but narrows the path? So, of course, he's always going to make a way for you to walk through that uh, wide gate. And... Where our heart should be is Isaiah 26, 9, where it says, My soul yearns for you in the night, and in the morning my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the earth will learn righteousness. This is where our heart should be too. The same as Yeshua, it should be the same place, the yearning for change. You've been exposed to it. Now are you operating as a soldier to do something about it? That's why, you know, Romans 6 through 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, watch that, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, it's all about love. And I think when we start learning that, when we start grabbing it, when we start saying, thank you for exposure of the spirit that I will pray for my brother to bring him back, um, that we can have a stronger army, A. B, the soldiers can work together in accordance, in accord, we'll get more done quicker. And C, um, love will become stronger in your life and the enemy will come less. And I'm talking to somebody today that's out there battling. Well, we all are. And we're all out, come short. So, if you're feeling like you're the only one out there, you're not. We all are. Second Peter 2 9 says, For this so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. He has everything planned out. Everything. That's why he says in Second Timothy 4, uh, seven eight. It says, "I have fought the good fight. I have finished the good, the race. I have kept the faith. Notice, kept the faith. Now that is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, it will award me on that day. Not only me, but all who have longed for His appearing. And this is a part of longing is when you do the will of God today, when you reach out and see those hurting and pray for them. When you say, Abba, Father, I commit this prayer to you into the paradise of this person, for I see things that this person is struggling with. Let I not judge, but let me have this prayer for them and take ownership until they are blessed the way you blessed us as well. I want to pray this prayer with you right now. If you're feeling in your soul, you need change, you've been judgmental, you're judging yourself. A lot of people judge themselves down, and that's just the spirit of demonic order to break you down. Uh, mirrors will do it. Um, people uh, over social media will do it. Uh, people in running their mouth will do it. Um, it. But remember, you are not yours. You are of God. You are a living temple and you are a soul. And you're walking in Yeshua's footprints takes it to a different level. So let me pray this prayer with you. Dear Yeshua, I commit unto you that anyone struggling in their judgment, anyone struggling in their battles, anyone struggling where they can't get a hold, Lord, I commit and release Spirit, I release that spirit right here, right now, that they cannot take all these soldiers, that they will see your love and they will do the will of God and not judge, but take the expulsion spirit and use it for the benefit and glory and will of God today. By the power of Yeshua, I ask that it would be sent to the strength of Yeshua in them, for them, and through them right now. In Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen and amen. If you haven't done that before, that prayer right there 
will take you everywhere you want to go. Listen, this is Big D Cross. I love you. Until next time, God bless you.